Hello and welcome to a new recording on machine learning using Python. This is Mustafa Kamaruddin and shall be your host in this recording. We shall discuss the regression analysis methods, basically linear regression, polynomial regression and logistic regression. Let's get started. So the basic problem linear regression is trying to solve is try is predicting the relationship between independent variables x and the dependent variable y basically we have some samples we don't know the kind of the relation between the uh, features x and the response or the dependent variable y so we try to predict the coefficients of this relationship ideally the relationship will be linear that means it should be represented by a straight line and of course we all know the straight line formula is depicted as follows y equals beta null plus beta ions or the beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus so on till beta n x n for number of features n so when we try to draw the this kind of formula what we get is a straight line Usually, as in this diagram, we have some records in our data set and they don't really fo uh, they don't have a strict formula attracting to them, but we can see that if we fit a straight line to the samples in our data set, it will cover uh, most of the cases, but with some error. So the least mean square error is the mm, common loss function used in this kind of analysis. Usually by uh, getting the distance between the samples predicted y, that's the predicted response through the straight line, the blue one in the diagram, and the original y as in the training set. By trying to reduce the distance depicted in the red color, we get what we call a best fit linear coefficients with an intercept that means the point by at which the line intercepts or crosses the y axis and the coefficients uh, the intercept here is called by the way the beta null or beta 0 and then the coefficients beta 1 beta 2 till beta n for each of the features so the formula simply calculates the predicted y minus the original y in the data set, the ground truth, all squared. Here the difference doesn't matter which is greater because if the output here is positive, by squaring it, it remains positive. If the output is negative, by squaring it, it remains negative. And then summing the of all the values for all the samples from sample 1 to sample n where n is the number of the samples in the data set this way we get a value for the error and our linear regression analysis is basically the minimization problem of these coefficients so that the overall squared error is minimum So the equation, once again, just to confirm that we're getting it, a generalized form of the same equation, root mean square error equals square root of the sum over all the samples of the predicted value minus the actual value, all squared, and then all divided by the number of samples in the data set. <coughs> Some important notes to be concerned with when working with reg uh, linear regression it must be a linear relationship for example if the data don't follow a linear model for uh, let's say they are following a polynomial relation of uh, order 8 or degree 8 that means we can't fit our line to the samples so we will have uh, will suffer low accuracy in this case but in this case actually we should uh, start by using polynomial regression which we will discuss next and then there is uh, multicollinearity, autocorrelation, heterodiscardistanicity, and some other problems that are associated with this kind of analysis. 
they are very sensitive to outliers in a previous recording we have uh, outlined a general algorithm for working with outliers how to find outliers how to drop them and so on and some of the other techniques used for capping the outliers or replacing their values transforming their values and so on by multicoloreality and uh, autocorrelation we mean that the relationship between the variables uh, can suffer a very s sensitive uh, jumps or uh, uh, disorders when it comes to minor changes in the model that means in other words the model is unstable one of the other techniques that are used in this case are the stepwise regression analysis the stepwise regression analysis is a sort of a brute force that tries to eliminate the features that are highly correlated with each other in a forward path and a backward path in the forward path it selects the highly cor correlated features in the backward path it eliminates them this is to say this algorithm stepwise uh, re aggregation analysis is uh, very savvy in terms of computational power and the memory requirements so let's get started with some hands-on code review first we import pandas as pd then we read the csv file of the features remember that we have been working with the bank marketing dataset we have been pre-processing in the previous section or the previous recording we have eliminated the outliers normalized most of the features and i tried to find the correlations between the features and the response then we run df.head to inspect the first five rows here intentionally we have left some of the columns unnormalized which we will normalize next using a different method from the one we used in the previous recording we drop then not a number values or not available values such as this one by calling df.dropna then we inspect the head we come that all the na values has been dropped and then from sklearn scikit-learn preprocessing we import the method minimum max scalar remember that the minimum max normalization works by applying the following formula x minus the minimum value divided by the maximum value minus the minimum value this way we get values for all the range between the minimum and the maximum value in our data set I mean between 0 and 1 for all the maximum and minimum values in our data set we instantiate uh, an instance of our uh, minimum max scalar we call it scalar and then we specify which columns we are interested in uh, normalization for example age job remember that we have applied here a categorical to numerical transform on this column in the previous section but uh, we still want to normalize it the education day month campaign previous days previous outcome and so on it's very simple all we have to do is call scalar.fit transform on our data frame of this column list and replace the outcome inside the original data frame df of columns and that's it one line of code and hey or our data is normalized now we inspect the data df.head visually inspection shows that all the values don't exceed one and don't go below zero we describe our data set df.describe we check the minimum value we find all our zeros maximum value or one or the maximum possible within the range that's it we are done pre-processing our data set and preparing it for the next step so next we import our model but before we import the model we have to do one more thing that's the train test split we have to divide our data to training set and testing set the training set which we are going to use in the training of the model and then we are going to test the accuracy of our model using the test set 
This way we don't mix the training and the testing to avoid overfitting. Sometimes the model learns data well, say well too well, that it memorizes the response for each sample in the data set. And this way we don't get really a good generalization model. A model that doesn't generalize too well on new instance of sample that it hasn't been trained on or it hasn't seen before. That's why a common practice is to split the data into training and testing set. Some other mo methods like uh, cross-validation which divides the data into k validation sets and most commonly used in ensemble learning we uh, some topic with that we shall discuss in a future recording next we have to divide the train the data to response and features the response we call y capital y equals data frame dot pop the column of age here interesting that to work with linear regression even though it works too good or too well with the discrete and continuous functions alike but for the purpose of demo here we shall work with continuous values and also not something the outcome in this market bank marketing dataset is a binary classification 0 or 1 accepted or rejected so in this case we have to find a more continuous feature to make as our y response and again that's just for the sake of demo in a real life example you will have different features different uh, response to work with so the problem is formulated as follows knowing the bank account of an individual how much balance in his bank account how long have we been talking to him on the phone call the sales phone call do you tell how I how old is this person so you may find that a person with a large amount in his bank account and with a phone call of 40 minutes for example is more likely to be a three 30 or 40 years old person let's see how far is that true by again simply knowing the balance and the duration of the sales phone call can you tell the age of the person as simple as this we call the train test split function we have imported from scikit-learn.model selection give it the data features as x capital x the response or the classification as capital y we want a test size of 10 percent of the data as we are going to use 90% of the data for training we can also change that value sometimes it's it can be as rigorous as 99% for training and 1% for testing that's fine and random state make sure that we get the same random values in each run or in each session that's the seed for the random generator from scikit-learn.linear models we import linear regression here we are we are finally going to run our model linear regression equals linear regression brackets that's in a uh, we are in instantiate a new instance of the class linear regression next we fit the model to our training data using x train and y train x train are the features for training y train is the response for the training we find the output here if fit intercept equals true n jobs equal one normalize false copy x true so that means the model has finished training next we find linear regression dot intercept remember this is beta zero value or the crossing of the y axis here we find that our new line crosses the y-axis at point, point 0.33 and then the coefficients we can get using linreg or the object or model object dot cof coefficients here cof for uh, simplicity underscore that's a private value we find that it has two coefficients that makes sense 
we have got a response a x1 feature and x2 feature and corresponding to each feature we have one coefficient and then we have an intercept that makes perfect sense so this is the coefficient related to the first feature coefficient related to the second feature let's do some testing so we import numpy as numpy and b we run the model we get the intercept value just like the, our previous formula plus the linear regression coefficient 0 multiplied by the exit training data dot balance dot values so we are getting the balance coefficient multiplied by the balance values for all the samples in our training set and then doing the same for the second feature linreg dot coefficient 1 multiplied by the exotrain dot duration dot values just to confirm the results we get y dot shape make sure that this is the original shape we had in our data set after we have pre-processed it remember when we started using the data set we had more than 4000 records but we ended up with 663 records after normalization drop not available and uh, outlier removal so next we have to calculate the r r root mean square error for this model on the training data remember the different values for testing data will be coming soon so we use numby dot square root numby dot sum the predicted value minus the original value squared over the number of records in the data set this gives us 0.21 not very bad for a start of course this is quite a high loss but we haven't done much yet we do the same for the testing data applying the formula the intercept coefficient multiplied by each feature Applying the root mean square error, square root, sum, prediction minus the original values or the ground truth squared over the length of the data set or the number of records in the data set N, capital N. We see that on the testing data, it didn't do very bad. It did just as well as the training data with a very low margin, 0.23 as an error. Still good still not overfitting still generalizing well on new instance that it hasn't seen before so next let's demonstrate how this looks on a graph to visualize the outcome it's also a good chance to review the capabilities of matplotlib in drawing 3d diagrams so we start by importing matplotlib as mpl mpl and scroll toolkits dot matplot 3d import axis 3d import numpy once again import matplotlib.pyplot as plot most important to use the jupyter notebook in line so that all the graphs will come inside the jupyter notebook next we set the font size of the matplotlib equal 10 we create a new figure of figure size 18 inches by 16 inches save the figure as an object set the projection to be 3d that's instructing matplotlib that we are interested in a 3d diagram they will return the axis we start plotting on the axis on the axis we plot the balance we are interested only in seven values or seven records so that we can get a good interpretation of the values in the diagram the duration and finally the original response the ground truth of these samples we give it a label original age remove the line so that it doesn't draw a line make the marker as a circular color green so green will resemble the original age the ground truth age in response to the duration of the phone call and the balance in the bank account next we draw the same but using our predicted age in this case y of 
colon 7 and this is a syntax in Python that tells it to get the 7 the, f uh, the last 7 values in the data dropping everything else give it a label remove the lines make it a circular points with the color red finally we show the legend this is the caption over here so that we know which uh, blot corresponds to which values and we show the plot this is what we get we get the balance and the duration normalized on the horizontal axis on the vertical axis is the age again this is normalized as we have already normalized all the values in our data set so we can see that this sample for example the difference between the ground truth and the predicted value is minimal but in other cases like this one there is a high difference some other cases we can't uh, fully correlate the points here but we can tell that this one most likely correspond to the lowest red point in the same plane this one may be corresponding to this one so most likely the distance between the ground truth and the predicted value is not optimal which is quite uh, expected since we are getting a loss of 0.23 or 0.21 quite a high loss in terms of machine learning algorithm but that's the point of this uh, demo is to visualize the outputs so could we do better yes sure we choose another model that better works with polynomial relations you see from the graph that the green values maybe just maybe follow a parabola or maybe follow another shape more complex exponential shape so let's play around with this reviewing a new method in regression analysis that's polynomial regression so polynomial regression solves exactly this problem where the relation is not linear some of the coefficients are squared or have degree 3 cubic quadratic even with higher degrees up to 8 yeah, let your imagina imagination go free but be careful we could be a victim of overfitting as you can see in these diagrams these are samples and this is the predicted line that uh, gets the relation between x and y x is the features y is the response or the prediction so here we can see a line that's underfitting it doesn't cover all the instance good enough let's get a hyperbolic relation second degree well perfect that's a much better fit by again let's get the degree 9 for example that matches every point in the data set you see this fine line this is a visualization of overfitting this would by no means generalize well to new instance that hasn't been trained on how do we implement polynomial regression in python using scikit-learn it wasn't quite straightforward to get this right but here you are how to do it first we start by importing from pre-processing polynomial features this is a polynomial function used by scikit-learn for polynomial interpolation it will simply transform our polynomial data to linear data and then again we are going to use linear regression so th this is how it works first we transform our data from polynomial data polynomial features to linear features then we can apply our linear regression on the data that's it as simple as this let's see how to do it the polynomial features can be instantiated with the degree of our uh, line or our relationship 
I get wild here I set the degree to equals 8 that's uh, I actually am intentionally trying to overfit the data then transforming the feature by applying poly.fit transform on the training set we get the what we call x underscore poly that's the transformation of the polynomial features to linear features then we instantiate a new model linear regression to linear regression and then we fit the data on the linear regression model note that we are going to use here the polynomial features we have extracted and as the response y underscore train the same outcomes that have come from the train test split before it worked trained and then we get the coefficients we can see here we've got many more coefficients for the line which is more likely a continuation or a merge of many lines not just one line get the intercept and then we do the same check on the test data first we fit transform our test data using poly.fitTransform x test that the testing features we get polynomial test features transformed to linear x features <coughs> and then we run scikit-learn method predict which will try to predict the true response giving the features and the lenreg underscore 2 model here it has all the coefficients and the intercept that it has learned from the training data get as an outcome the predicted y next we apply numpy square root numpy sum predicted values minus ground truth squared over the number of samples in the testing set we get here a loss of 0.27 that's indeed higher than what we get with linear regression alone well what I would say in this case is go back trying to change the degree from 8 to 3 4 maybe 5 and see how your model performs till you get a slightly lower loss value yeah that was indeed higher than what we got before I'll leave this as an exercise to you to play around with the different models and try to get the best model out of this uh, polynomial regression so third and last in our discussion today is the logistic regression logistic regression works best in cases where we have a classification problem a binary classification problem that is the output is either 0 or 1 accepted or rejected in this case with bank marketing data set this would be an ideal model to test on our data so a quick mathematical background on the logistic regression the logistic regression comes from the logistic function a function that maps all the values on the x-axis two values in the range 0 and 1 that makes that makes it a be, uh, best candidate for binary classification if we try to model the logistic regression as a neural network a topic that we shall discuss in deeper details in future recordings but very quickly looking over here at this diagram having our inputs are the different features of our data set x1 representing the first column x2 second column xm the last column in this case column number 16 so these are the features and from the intercept we are using one as it is not multiplied by any feature this is the beta 0 the intercept the value multiplied by the intercept is 1 so having these features 
for all the samples in our data set multiplied by the coefficients because here we are trying to uh, visualize the logistic regression as a neural network instead of using beta or theta as a notation for the weight coefficients we are using w that's a convention since neural networks are usually working with weights so weight 0 is the intercept weight 1, weight 2, weight m corresponding to the feature m coefficient m multiplying all the coefficients by all the inputs summing over the results applying the logistic function and then doing a rectifier or a step function unit a step function you can see over here in the range between 0 and 4 let's say our value is 2 what we get is 0.9 if the value is negative 2 we are getting 0.2 something so we want to map these values to a, a strict 0 or 1 value that's why we apply a rectified linear unit and here are our minimum square loss function for the back propagation learning in this case so that we say okay these weren't the best coefficients let's try to get them better add or modify the weights by a slight very uh, a slight differentiation of the error over the weights we shall discuss back propagation algorithm in deeper details next so just to see how similar logistic regression is to our uh, uh, linear regression here is a slide from another course by Andrew NG on Coursera you can see here the cost function in the case of linear regression it was a function of the coefficients here notated by theta it's right uh, most of the literature uses either theta, beta or omega as a notation for the coefficients and then divided by the number of samples the sum of the square root this uh, the sum of the difference between the ground truth and the predicted value squared so what we shall change here in order to apply this to logistic regression instead of our uh, having the cost function applied di directly by multiplying the coefficients by the inputs we are having a logist function that is powered by the coefficients and the inputs slightly the same instead of the representation uh, the logistic function we can see over here is simply 1 over 1 plus e power x this is the same notation you can see here for e power x but here or for all the range of x that means all the features in the input x slightly the same that's 1 over 1 plus e my negative theta transpose x that's like is uh, exactly the same theta transpose x is the same as linear regression but here difference is that it is a exponential function or is the used as the input to an exponential function this gives us this smooth transition between 0 and 1 one of the things that uh, worth mentioning here is that the cost function in the case of logistic regression is a convex function these are the coefficients or the weights these are the errors so the error we are trying to minimize goes smoothly over the curve here till it finds a global minimum a worth exam uh, uh, another bad example of this case is a non-convex uh, cost function which you can see very red on this side of the curve the coefficients and the error on the vertical side the cost function will get stuck in any of these local minima of the curve and it will be quite difficult to find the global minima as in here 
So remember, this model works with classification, binary classification problems. It doesn't suffer multicollinearity uh, as in the linear regression. There are slight variations of this model, such as ordinal reg logistic regression, multinomial logistic regression, and so on. So how do we implement this model using scikit-learn? Let's see. From scikit-learn.linear model, import logistic regression. Logistic regression equals logistic regression. Import the data set as we have been tampering with the previous uh, data set we had. Drop all the not available values and not a number values. How here means it will drop all the it will drop the whole record if just one column or one feature is missing. Another uh, variation of this uh, drop in a method is how equals all, where it will drop all. It will drop the record only when all the features are missing. Inspector data, mm, no NA values. Normalize the data of the columns we haven't nor we ha uh, that haven't been normalized when we save the data set. S minimum max scalar from scikit-learn uh, uh, pre-processing. Scalar fit transform data set of columns, data set dot head. We see that all the values are normalized indeed. We divide the data into a response y equal data set dot pop of the response column y and x is the remaining of the data set columns. We do train test split from scikit-learn with test size equal 10%, random state 101 x-train, x-test, y-train, y-test. We fit the model using x-train and y-train and then test the model using another method of scikit-learn models, a score, which is accuracy. So logistic model dot score, you on the x-test and the y-test which it hasn't been trained on, and we get a model that performs 82% of accuracy. That's out of 100 cases, it recognized 82 cases as correct just as in the ground truth and that's it quite simple only a few lines of code you've got a working model that performs 82 percent of accuracy wow indeed a progress in future records we are going to discuss more topics of machine learning with the neural networks python tensorflow pytorch and so on thank you for watching and see you next session goodbye